Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Hi, Rex Daniel Whiskey. Vault. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Martin Grimaldo, a magnificent bastard. Martin Grimaldo, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> This right. is a uh, Juntas. Have I had this? No, I don't think you have. Oh. This is Balconis. Again. Golden Promise. Uh, aged in French oak barrels. All right. And finished in tequila. Just really quick. This is a clear bottle. Yeah, wait. Yeah, look at that. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> wait till it pours in the glass. It's just the It looks same. like coffee. <laughs> yeah. This is finished in te tequila barrels. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Right? Interesting. So Golden Promise, French oak, then finished in tequila barrels. I So I've liked what they've done with French oak in the past. Mm -hmm. The fact that they threw in a tequila barrel? I know. A tequila barrel? I know. All right, I'm very excited about this. Have not had it. It smells like Jared. <laughs> <laughs> like sandals and patchouli oil. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is, I don't think he even uses patchouli, but, I, uh, but he looks it just like, looks like patchouli. Looks like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's striking me is you say something like tequila barrel. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, okay, that's going to just bah. Right. It's not like knocking me on my ass here. This is... No, it's subtle. It is subtle. And it's dense, too. It's an interesting co combination of being... You can tell there's a lot of deep, rich flavors just on the nose, but also you're not just getting anything spiking you or punching the nose. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to look at these yet, but I down, I mean, not really in depth. I downloaded the notes that they wrote for this whiskey. Yeah. And I feel like Gabe was involved because one of our running jokes uh, hanging out with Gabe that was really fun yeah. was Who's Gabe? Gabe is. Uh, uh, what is he? What's uh, his role? Officially, his I don't remember what his official title He's is. He's a dude. He runs and in charge of the barrel house and, yeah. and tasting and blending and yeah. things, right? Um, so, anyway, he's oh, an all-around badass. Right. Whiskey badass. That's his official title. Okay. All-around whiskey badass. Right. And super kind. But he his tasting notes are so obscure. They're like, it's like reading, um, what do you call it? Sing the, uh, the SMWS labels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The SMWS bottling really elaborate tasting notes. I'm going to read those to you, but first I want our own impressions. Oh, yeah. On the nose, I'm getting like a, like a craft soda. You ever had those? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Like we have some down at the Finimans, distillery. Finimans. 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 Yeah, Curiosity Cola. Yeah. Yeah, or those, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like so. almost root beery, almost, almost Dr. Peppery, yeah. almost Coke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like syrupy. Yeah. Right, but sweet syrupy. Yeah. Like really sweet. Yeah. But there's also this like really hefty wood layer. Yeah. Uh, so we should mention. Like it's rich. Uh, we actually have a, a relationship, personal and professional, with Balcones. Yeah. We started out just living the whiskey. Then we became friends. And now in our own private venture, we are sourcing some. Yeah, we're financially vested in Balcones being a success. So, you know, we've always loved this. But mm -hmm. now we're going to try and be super, super objective. But take it for what it's worth. We like the people, and we've always liked the whiskey. Yeah, I mean, the reason we're invested with them at some level is because we love their whiskey. So it's, of now, course. we're not invested in this. No. We would never do any review on something that we are directly invested in. No. Oh, that's totally different. What is that? That is... Like I'm um, chewing on a root. Whoa! Okay, so you know what this reminds me of I'm is... chewing on a root? I was, whoa! And it, and like I got some flat craft soda. I'm not certain I like that. <laughs> I got flat. Oh, tequila. <laughs> it's like, what is this weird act? Oh, it's tequila. Yeah, it tastes like, it tastes like the aftertaste of doing a tequila shot. Yeah, yeah. Mixed with for like for a like, second, I forgot. There's tequila, tequila. involved. <laughs> yeah. I imagine if you if you if you were gently sipping on Balconis. Mm -hmm. And then you took a shot of tequila and just like flushed it through. And then your aftertaste is like that lingering, woody, rich molasses balconist note with this coating of like all a, of this herb, tequila, it's a peppery, spice. It's a peppery, rooty. 
You know what it reminds me of? Mm -hmm. Recently, I started making Indian dishes, but like completely from scratch. I love Indian. And dishes. so I had to go to you, you the Indian market. Do you spice it up? Yeah, I had to go to the Indian market yeah. and buy like 15 kinds of spices yeah. that they have in bulk bags, right? They don't sell them in the little red things. They sell them in like just bags. More like a restaurant supply store. Yeah, <laughs> and so I have those now. So my cupboard is jam packed full of like bulk supply, yeah. like. Um, just the weirdest root type things, cardamom, <gasps> I was cori to say, car coriander, cinnamon, uh, chili powder, um, uh, just all these things, right? Yeah. It reminds me of the smell of my cupboard right now. There, there, I was, a, <laughs> you're going through the spices, I was like, there may be like a cardamom type of note. Mm -hmm. Oh, just kind of right there. Uh, that is so weird. It is a funky adventure. I think, I'm a fan of funky <laughs> adventure. Yeah. And if I want to go exploring, this is super, super interesting. Yeah. But one of the more unique things we, we've tried. But in terms of just raw enjoyability, yeah, not this my isn't going to pull me out of whatever I'm doing. No. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I like tequila. I don't love tequila. Right. And I find it, I like how much it is. It does state the level of accent, mm -hmm. but I'm not entirely sure that the accent works really well with what the body of that whiskey is giving. You ready for but the tasting? But it may be my personal preference, my personal flavor palette. Yeah. Uh, smell. You ready? Yeah. Forest floor notes. Wet slate. Wet slate. Yeah. Grilled nopales. Dr Pepper syrup. Oh. Yeah. Singed cedar. Oh, the singed cedar and I, blackened plums. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Singed cedar. Dr Pepper. Yes. Singed cedar. Yes. I don't know what wet slate is like. Is he going for like a petrichor? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. And they blacken plums? Mm -hmm. Oh, like a charred type of plum thing? Yeah. Now you're ready on the taste? Take yeah. a sip. You should experience gripping herbal no notes of coriander, peppercorn medley, venison jerky. It's very specific. Hold on though, but he's not wildly off base on these. Grilled star fruit. Wait, come on. <laughs> right? Wait, you, know, you were, I was, I was with you. I was with you. Grilled <laughs> star fruit, dried clover, <laughs> and smoked rosemary. Okay. Grilled star fruit. Uh, smoked rosemary. I think. I could see rosemary. I could see, I could see a smoked rosemary for mm -hmm. sure. And then what was between grilled star fruit and smoked Dried rosemary? clover. Dried clover. I don't know what dried clover tastes like or smells like for that matter. The yeah. thing about Gabe I, is his tasting notes are always really out there, yeah. but shockingly precise. Yeah, they're very, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think most of those is like, that is such a weird son of a bitch. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly. Now on the finish, we're not done yet. Oh. Long, earthy, sweet notes of Earl Grey. Okay. Amber honey. Yes. Linen paper. Raisinets. Son of a bitch, dude. Saffron. And green peppercorn. Green peppercorn. Saffron. I have saffron in my spice cupboard right now. Saffron. Raisinets. Um, I've never had raisinets. Uh, it's basically chocolate covered raisin. Ah, ugh, I hate raisins, so I, I'm out. I like grapes. Yeah. I don't like when they're dead. I, the interesting thing about those notes, as weird as they are, there is like this interesting overlap commonality between like uh what was the rice that you've never had the rice what what was the dried clover no was it this saffron saffron no i've had saffron no what i'm saying is this it mm -hmm. yeah there's it, like with smoked rosemary and saffron and i never really considered I've had saffron rice and I've never really considered there to be any kind of common connection between like, like a rosemary and a saffron. But then in this glass, it's like, oh, I get a little, a little corner of that and a little piece of that. You Again. realize my goal in life is to get you to the nose flare. Like that's every video if I can pull it off. Right. <laughs> like I need Dan to, to mark the moment where every time Rex does the nose flare, distant stare, nose flare pause. So because that's when I know. It's working. My version of this <laughs> is something 
that I experience much more often, quite frankly. <laughs> That's true. Where I start a sentence and then you'll jump in. Yeah. Trying to find where I'm going. You just shut up and let me say it. Yeah, yeah. But Dang. then you, but then you get Dang. this moment. Long distance stare. And the nose flare. <laughs> I was just waiting for you. I'm just waiting for you. Are you done? Are you done? And the nose flare. Are you done? So you let, you Look for it. Do? It's awesome. You're like the Kanye of co-hosts. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm oh, finish. finish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you don't realize how calculated so much of this is. Oh, I mean, oh, I, 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 do, I do generically like jump in as we're talking. But then there's moments when I'm realizing it. When I, there's a moment where it crosses where I realize I'm doing it. And then I keep going. <laughs> do, 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 no, this is, remember we talked about Schrodinger, Schrodinger's douchebag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this is your version of Schrodinger's douchebag. Like rewriting history because for I think, intentionality? I think you're so uncomfortable with doing things unconsciously oh, no. that you will say, well, it was a very calculated effort on my part. Most no, no, no. I, listen to what I just said. I, don't, I, don't, I do it without thinking. You're calculating nothing. Yeah. But then there's a point where I realize, dude, you're doing it again. And then I'll sometimes just keep going <laughs> to see if I can get the nose flare. <laughs> Schrodinger's calculator. Uh, <laughs> I... Oh, we should explain my Schrodinger's juice bag, dish, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you remember Schrodinger's cat? Because it's very funny. It is great. Yeah. It's like until you open the box, you don't know where the, the cat or is alive or dead. So you can consider it both alive and dead. At the same time. This yes. is quantum physics, basically. So, the, the theory or quantum of reality. Schrodinger's, uh, Schrodinger's douchebag. Yeah, are you one of those people who, like, they'll just go into a room and they'll say something is kind of, like, pointed and offensive and jerky. And depending on the reception, yeah. at that point, they will decide whether or not they meant it and they're going to own it. and Or if it didn't go well, it's like, it was just a joke. I'm man. just kidding. Just a joke. Just kidding, man. So, Why are you so sensitive? They only decide after a fact whether or not they say they were joking, even mm -hmm. though they're just being a douchebag. Yeah. I, I really like that one. Uh, I, I think if I'm, again, if I'm looking for just sitting down relaxing and enjoying, I'm going to reach for other stuff. But if I want to go exploring, mm -hmm. I this may be at the very top of my list for things that I, I just want to go on a funky adventure. It's weird. It's interesting. It begs to be picked apart. I keep finding new things. Yeah. No, this is a, such a unique whiskey, but it is something that demands your attention. And if you're in that, uh, your attention, if you're not in that mode, then it's just going to keep tugging at you to, to get in there. You added some water. This is a long episode for this 56% alcohol, but I wanted to just to try it. Mm. Ooh, it, it got does it. more wow. woody. That proof is surprising. Mm -hmm. Dude, it does not kick like a 56%. Uh, it's simplified. I would want to let that water rest. Yeah. It sort of washed out all of the things I found interesting. I, it's probably the most notable thing that we didn't give any amount of conversation to is how high of a proof that is, mm -hmm. but actually how smooth and soft it is. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, was there comments we're doing? Yeah, there were. I mean, <laughs> we spent all the time on Schrodinger's douchebag and Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, I fight for friends. You steal me, you steal your lips. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.